Good afternoon and welcome back to the Ask Dr. Renee show. If you've never watched the show before, this show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve. Because let's face it, you do not have a dress rehearsal. This is the one we only, this is the only one we have. So why not live it, live it up? And all my guests in the past, present, and future understand that, and that's what they're doing. So we've had Dee Nice, we've had Teddy Riley, we've had Lisa Nichols, we've had amazing um, bloggers, um, uh, Christine St. Bill and Brandy Riley, and we've had my money coach, Draca Jones, we've had my investment coach and queen of capital, um, Cassandra Cummings, and my trading coach, Jade the Trader. But today we have one of my actual, if you guys know, I wear a publicity hat, I do PR, and I do PR now for physicians, but I did PR for entertainment. And one of, one of my very favorite former clients is joining us today. He has been on before, but that episode had a lot of technical problems. And so now we have better technology. We brought him back. And of course, it's Black Music Month. So today's guest, in case you have never heard any of Troop's music, then you have heard his other music because he has written for the likes of Jennifer Hudson, Jordan Sparks, Chris Brown, um, B2K, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Charlie Wilson, The Whispers, the list goes on and on and on. So please, please, please welcome my guest, Stephen Russell Hart. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's up? What's up? <laughs> so He's back. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone, um, so first of all, I always start at the very beginning. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, initially, I wanted to be a baseball player. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a baseball player, and I wanted to be in the Jackson 5. Okay, that's an interesting combination. Of course, I forgot housekeeping, you guys. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And if you would like to ask a question, don't forget to do that super chat or super sticker. And of course, share this with people. Like, comment, and share so that everyone can see and hear. The, I'm telling you, when I tell, I always tell him, but I don't think he believes me when I say it. He is like a musical genius. The songs that the man has written, it just blows me away. And my sister, I think I told you one day, my sister goes, you know, he really isn't that bad of a singer, but my God, he writes a song. <laughs> right? I said, we thought he just sang. And then all these songs. So baseball player in Jackson 5. That is very, very interesting. So um, so you started in the business my very early. first once was to... Yeah. Uh, well, I right, started pursuing. Right. So very I know early. you were out of Venice 30. Beach. How old were you I was, then? Uh, I was like seven, or eight years old, maybe nine years old then. When my aunt used to take me to Venice Beach and have me dance against people and stuff, I was a kid. I was a little. I was the smallest pop locker on the planet at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so then, how did you, you know, how did you end up, you know, in high school getting into a group? Uh, well, from doing all that dancing and stuff, I, I, I ended up falling in love with imitating Michael Jackson around 12 years old. So I did a lot of performing around town and at different Air Force bases and stuff performing Michael Jackson. And I fell in love with that. Just the response and how excited people were over that made me get the bug to want to do it myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, what, that's what led me to even having the want to pursue being an entertainer was per, uh, performing Michael Jackson. So in high school, around 1984, a friend of mine and a couple of his buddies went on a TV show called Putting on the Hits, uh, where you lip sync other people's songs and they won. And a producer actually saw the show and wanted to know if they could sing. And that's really what started it all. He came right to me and was like, hey, man, this producer saw the show and wanted to know if we could sing, man. Well, you, I need you in the group, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's just kind of how it started. You know, John John followed. Um, Alan came a little later and um, we went from five of a kind to troop. And that's how it started right at Pasadena High School. That is crazy. I mean, th yeah. who, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> at 13. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is crazy. So. You guys get with this producer, and when does the first album actually come out? 
Uh, well, we, we get this producer. This is like a early 1984 and five when this stuff is going on. So we don't get our record deal until 1986 and the album doesn't come out to 1988. So it took a, the entire high school life to manifest yeah. truth. Um, but we came out at, um, right before I graduated in 1988. Okay. Uh, number one record produced and um, written and produced by Gerald Levert, oh, okay. Mark Gordon, and Eddie Levert Sr. Uh, and we were off to the race. Otherwise known as Levert. Levert. Huh? <laughs> Is it otherwise known as the group Levert. Yes. They hooked us up. You know, they planted the seed for us to blow up, and we did. Well, the song, the song is Mama Sita, right? Yeah, Mama. Okay. Well, they did Mama Sita. Uh, I like that. They did a few songs on the first album, and they did the title track of the second album. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we were off to the races after that. Okay, so Bam is here. She just waved. I tell Bam. I said, "Hi, Bam." <laughs> <laughs> And Ashney is one of my trading buddies. Hi, Ashney. Oh, hi, Shanda. Okay, so, um, oh, and you know what? I forgot to remind my friend. Remember you, you, you talked to my friend on the phone. I forgot to remind her. Let me do that right now, you guys. I'm so sorry. This is what happens when things are live. You have to do things like this. Um, but so, Mama Sita was the jam. But yeah. um, and you guys were signed to Atlantic Records. So Joy Brown of Atlantic Records was on the first um, first week of Black Music Month this year, oh, and okay. she um, she wasn't there then, but um, she was Heavy D's assistant. Oh, okay, that's right. Like, wow. But um, <laughs> Shanda said, "Spread my wings," my favorite troop song. Nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so you guys off to the races now. First of all, because there's a lot of people out there that are trying to get into the business and stuff. Although now things are very different because I'm telling you, I keep telling, I tell him, I tell everyone, put it on the internet, sell it yourself. You don't need a big label behind you. But what did you do between signing that early and it taking so long for things to take off? Uh, well, well, back then it was called A and R, you know, okay. artist and repertoire. The label, the label uh, puts you, you know, you have to come up with the songs. You have to come up with who, you know, you have to create this thing. We just signed these five guys. Who are they? What do they sound like? What are the songs gonna be? You know, the songs that we did to get signed are definitely not gonna be the songs that we put out. You know, right. So we had to go through the whole process of songs and me becoming. A, I have to learn how to write songs and. You know, and then finally they put us with Chucky Booker, Joe Laverde, and then we finally started getting songs. It was it was just a process, man. Uh -huh. It was just it's a so, serious process. Now I think nowadays they don't necessarily teach people how to write songs, do they? Uh, nah, you don't have to be that. You don't have to be extra at anything right now. All you have to do is be catchy. So you don't have to be a great songwriter to do anything now. You know, uh -huh. you get get you one catchy little nice little joint. You good. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I, I peeped your shirt. Lovely. Writer, producer. He's just a man of all talents. Actor, director, excuse us. <laughs> um, now you are working on a documentary about Troop. When do yes. we see this? Uh, well, I'm working on it diligently as we speak. It's a five episode uh, series where each member of the group tells their own story from their own perception, their own side. You know, it's it's gonna be really entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> but we're working on it as we speak right okay. now, getting okay. it finished. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. Fingers you know. crossed, everyone. Yes. Yes. Um, now I have to say, I was watching an old episode of 90210 yesterday, and Color Me Bad was on. Okay. And I thought of you because. They the, the girl that was sitting there with them, she wasn't the big fan. It was another girl on the show. So she goes, I mean, I'm a fan, but I'm not like those groupie fans. So she goes, what is it like? So they mentioned how it was crazy having tons and tons of people, you know, running after you. And I know you've told me that you guys shut down malls and stuff. Yeah. What was that like? Unreal, surreal. Uh, I've, I've had to get kicked out of a mall by myself. <laughs> You know, like 
you're causing too much trouble, man. You gotta go. You know, we will we will escort you out. <laughs> um, and I think I loved it. I, I it's a it's scary and fantastic all at the same time. You dream of people adoring you and what you do, and when you finally experience it in the physical, you know, outside of a dream, and you right. finally physical, uh, somebody finally loves you like that, and people are screaming. And, it's the best thing in the world, man. You know, it's it's great. It's a wonderful feeling to be, you know, uh, perceivingly loved like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels great. It feels and, absolutely great and unreal. And then I know you came from a single parent household to have the, all that money. It's fun. <laughs> My mom taught me how to be a humble young little boy without to be happy for others, you know, and be very appreciative of what I do have. And I was, and mm -hmm. um, when I had the opportunity to make money and spend it, I did just that. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have yes. mercy. Okay, so I always have to tell people how I know people. So yes, he was my former client, but how did we get there? So you guys, I keep telling y'all Twitter is the bomb, but people don't believe me, but Twitter right. is the bomb. So. Chris Brown, what's the name of the song with I Will Always Love You? Um, um, uh, Alicia, dang. look it up. It was, it was Chris Brown and Fat Joe, right? I don't remember. I just know it was I Will Always Love You, and that's my yeah. song. And I was, I realized yeah. that. Yeah. So I heard that and I typed it, I tweeted him, not thinking the man's gonna respond. And he's actually, no, I think I tweeted, I will always love you as my song. And then you tweeted and told me about the Chris Brown song. So then I heard it, but I never thought the man would tweet me back. And he right. did. I was like, oh, random. Okay. And so then <laughs> I would tweet and I forgot. We just would tweet all the time. So then I was going to California and I'm like, you know, I'm going to send the man a message and tell him I'm going to California. And I don't think he responded till I actually was in California. And I was like, oh my God, he responded. And he's like, you should come to the studio. And I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah. Insane. So I think Steve knows this, but he acts like he doesn't know this. So you guys, Steve was my childhood crush. Like my favorite member of Troop was Steve. Uh, that's so sweet. But you knew that. I told you that. <laughs> Remember I told you I went to that concert in Chicago when you guys came and BBD was there. Yeah, and yeah. I saw, because we were hanging out, because my friend knows Ron DeVoe and them. So we were hanging out with them kind of. I was standing there with Ron and I saw Alan in the lobby of the hotel, but Alan wasn't my, that wasn't my person. It was you. And so I didn't say anything. I just stood there and said, Oh, there he is. And then I was like, well, maybe Steve will come too. And no, Steve. Um, so that, no, I was probably getting my beauty sleep. <laughs> you're so silly. So, um, so yeah, so I was just like, oh my goodness. So I told my sister, my sister's the only person I told, I said, Alicia, I'm going to the studio to meet Steve. She was like, okay. And I said, you have to stay on the phone with me. So she stayed on the phone with me. I pull up to the studio. And first of all, the studio in the front, it had all brown paper in the windows. And I'm like, Lord, where am I going? I said, God, help me. Please don't let anything happen to me because I'm stupid. And so then I pull in the back, I park, and I go to the door. And I'm like, I'm still on the phone with my sister. I knock on the door, and he opens the door. And I was like, and I said, now, even though I told Steve I knew three Steves when I worked with him, because first he had all this hair on his face. I was like, please keep that off. Then he had all this hair on his head, and then he had no, I mean, he just looked so different. Three different iterations of Steve. So he answered the door, and he had all this hair on his face, but I could still see that was him. So I said to my sister, I go, it's him. I'm good. So hung up. So then we go in the studio, and the studio, you guys, was so small. I was like, oh my goodness, this is a little tight in here. And he shuts the door, and I'm like, oh Lord. So then my sister texts, is like, are you okay? And I text her back, I go, I'm fine. <laughs> yes. He's not a, he's not a perv. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that. It was, is it really him? Is it, <laughs> you know, it's the internet, right? Right. So that's how I met Steve. And so I was actually getting out of the business of doing PR for entertainers and was just going to work on Foodie Engineer, my lovely sister, and myself as Dr. Renee. And um, 
I had Steve was telling me what he wanted to do, and I was like, "Well, you should do this, and you should do that, and you should do this." And he's like, "Well, why don't you work with me?" And I go, "Oh, but I don't do that anymore." Like, <laughs> but yes, you do. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you I do don't now. Do anymore. And so you then, have a client. I said, um, "Okay." So I said, "So here's the." I said, "I will do it," but I said, "You have to listen to me." I said, "I don't care how many years you have in the business. You have to listen to what I say." And he was like, "Okay," and I'm like, "Okay." I said, "But you." You know nice Renee that is your fan. You don't know Renee who works. Dr. Renee don't play. And because I didn't play, he was like popping out everything. Ebony, Je I mean, he was everywhere. We got a lot done. We did get a lot done. And I mean, it was in record bless time. Your heart. <laughs> so I was like, um, so the first thing was, he's like, okay, well, I'm going to be Stephen Hartz. And I swear to the Lord. Remember, we had that discussion in person at the yep. table. I yep. was like, oh God, no, you can't do this. Everything says Stephen Russell. But not, but no. <laughs> yeah, we went back and forth with that for a minute. We sure did. <laughs> So I just use both names. Right. I was like, you understand. You can't change this stuff now. <laughs> people would be like, who? But when other people, when you say, especially people who know music and read the liner notes, you say yeah, Stephen yeah, yeah. Russell, they're like, oh my God, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you say Stephen Russell, they're like, hearts are like, who? And yeah, so, yeah. and the quick story is that he did not know whose father was. He found out who his father was. And so he put his last, he got his last name, which makes perfect sense and i think it's great i was just trying to get my job for done. marketing yeah, yeah exactly. no i get it i get it totally and i mean in the man if you guys go to itunes right now he has what is it like two or three different ways that your name is on itunes it's about three different ways <laughs> yeah. man it's confusing I, man I, I, that sucks too man but tons of music if you want to go buy it please Help the Steve Russell, Stephen yeah. Russell, Steve Hart, Stephen Hart. It just sucks, man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so you can find you you'll find him. And his picture, you can tell it's him. And you'll yeah, so yeah. when you see the different names, you'll figure out it's him. Right. But uh, but yeah, he has tons of music on all of the digital platforms. Please support. But um, so yeah, so we started working together. And I mean, when I tell you I was blown away, but you guys, when I got home from that California trip, I start, cause that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. So I started doing my research. Cause of course I knew Troop, but I didn't realize all the stuff he wrote. So then I saw something that said he wrote a song for Glenn Lewis. Do you remember this? I sent him an email at like two o'clock in the morning when I was researching it and said, you wrote a song with Glenn Lewis for Glenn Lewis because I love Glenn Lewis. Another person Some I met on Twitter. Happen to me. Don't know what it is, but ooh, that's me and Troy Taylor, baby. <laughs> so you guys, I he calls me the next day and says, I saw your email. You like that's you like Glenn Lewis? I was like, Yeah, I go, what'd you do with him? And he's saying that, and you guys, I told him, whatever you do, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. That was, so you guys, if you don't know, Beauty Shop, I think it was Beauty Shop 1. That song was on the soundtrack. It was a duet between Glenn Lewis and Amel LaRue. That song, And when man. I tell you, that song is the bomb. Yeah. So I was like, oh, don't sing that again. But yes, that is my song. I was just blown away at that point because I already was a huge fan. But I'm like, oh, my God, that was my song. Then you know what else he wrote that I was like, no, he didn't. But it made sense. The signs of lovemaking. <laughs> it's like that Scorpio part because he's a Scorpio, you guys. <laughs> that was like the best sign in the whole song. <laughs> I was like, it was just crazy. Oh, Bam said, when did the songwriting start? Before the underdogs or after? Oh, way before the underdogs were even thought of. Uh, I started writing songs in the tenth grade, uh, but I didn't. I, as soon as the underdogs were conceived, Harvey Mason brought me in. So I was, I was there. Me, Jay Valentine was first, and then myself, um, and that was 1988, 89, 88, 89. So the song for the whispers, I know that was your first. I mean, my, one. 1999. Was, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. Right. So the song for the whispers, that was before that. Yeah, the song for the whispers I did when I was 18, 19 years old. 
that was the first gold album I ever had. The Whispers, I was working on some music in the studio and the Whispers happened to be working in the same studio and they came by and Scotty came by and was like, who did that? I was like, I'm working on it right now. He's like, man, we, he went and got the other members of the group and said, hey man, y'all come here. And they ended up paying me, they gave me my first production, my first gold album, my first shot. And they gave me my first shot as a producer. Like, you know, I, I, I'm in the studio writing songs to prove myself being right. worth and they came in to when it got to be like I was a young up and coming guy. Actually, they gave me my shot. That's lovely. That is lovely. Sure did. But yeah, so that the started, whispers yeah, was that first. started everything. What'd you say? No, that's it. Ah. Uh, the whispers were first. Yeah. So the whispers were first, and then um, the underdogs. And the underdogs is where he did a lot of his other songs that you would you would know. And yeah, why he I had did. Um, Chris Brown. Yeah, I had the major run with the underdogs. I didn't, I didn't, I had, I had songs placed here and there before the underdogs, but after the underdogs, that's when I was able to just really hone in. You know, we had such a, a, a great platform. We had people coming to us for the records and uh, that's all we needed. That's why we were to sell so many records, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And um, what is my other song? Oh, B2K, what's my song? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Gots to be no slow. Oh, why I love you. Thank you. And um, that was my jam and didn't know that was him, too. I mean, it was just so many things, you guys. And then my sister, I told you, my sister's song is the Faith Evans song, Never Gonna Let You Go. Is that, uh, it? No, is that my, no, no, my, my Faith Evans song is. Um, darn it. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, 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 thank you, good night. I did a song okay. called Thank You, Good Night on Faith Evans. Okay, okay. But yeah, so just so many. But um, the other thing that I know nobody knows unless you follow him is you have this thing with pigeons, which I think is so random. <laughs> I have a big thing with pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because you guys, we would FaceTime and he would be feeding the pigeons. And I'm just like, what is he doing? Since seven years old. I've had pigeons my entire life, except for when I was, you know, traveling with Troop. Wow. Wow. And most and you can and most people most people have never even heard of roller pigeons. Pigeons that do backward somersaults really fast towards the ground. We can compete with them against other people's team and my team against your team is the best thing on the planet and shanda said like best. mike tyson and yes like mike tyson yeah yeah that's my buddy <laughs> we are pigeon bros for <laughs> sure so bam said so you knew at a young age that you wanted to be an entertainer and songwriter or just entertainer yeah. Did you know songwriter well, yeah, once I got in the music business and I was being produced by Gerald LaVert and Chucky, I wanted to be like them. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to do what Gerald was doing. I wanted to tell people how, how to sing it, sing it like this, do it one more time. You know, I wanted to be the one that creates the something from nothing like they were doing with us. Um, so I knew right away, as soon as I got in the business, it, it, it became apparent to me what I was in this thing for, and it was much more than just being an artist. Gotcha. And I got that early on. I was too intrigued by the songwriting process. I was too intrigued by the production process and what it what it took to start a song, to create the music, create, come up with the melody, and then get the download for the lyrical concept. All that stuff just blew me away, you know? And to find out that it's the producer that gives the artist all the stuff. It's the producer that's the man. I, I just, that was it. I, I had to become a producer. Another little known fact is my voiceover demos, he produced them. Yep. And he was so yep. mean. Oh my God. I was like, who is this person? Come on, man. We, we can, we're professional right here. I was <laughs> I go, this is not the same person. I can't do this. He's being mean. Do it again, Renee. No, that's not how you sound like. Whoa, 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 wait. Whoa. Let's go. Let's go. 
it nah, came out it, fabulous. It came out great though. It did. It did. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I was like, whoa! I said, oh my god! I don't know if this was a good idea. <laughs> um, Most so, people don't know what it takes to cut a record. This is true. This is true. Yeah, I I love the behind the scenes stuff. Like we were just me and my trainer were talking about um the black album. You know, there was a DVD. And when Timbaland was doing Brush Your Shoulders Off, that is the best part of that whole DVD. He got so into that music. I was like, this is on fire. Fire. <laughs> yes. Uh, Shanda said, did you ever have stage fright? And if so, how did you overcome it? Um, yeah, I had stage fright extremely before I got in troop. When I was just a dancer, not having to sing was fine. I, I could dance. But to sing in front of somebody, what? You know, I still have stage fright, to be honest. I don't know, I, don't, I never got over it. I just, I became the boss of it. Instead of it just ruling me, I was able to contain it and, you know, and, and, and just get some kind of a grip on it to deal with it and make it through the performance. And I, to this day, when somebody say, hey, you guys, two minutes, I can run out and leave the whole auditorium and just run somewhere and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just the scariest thing on the planet. And I don't know if I'll ever get over that, but it has caused me to work really hard as an entertainer to, to, to be good, you know, so. I guess it just comes with the territory, but I'm still stage fright. I still have that same fear as I did in the beginning. So my best friend, I, I know I didn't tell you this. My best friend was like, after after we did that show in Detroit, she, mm -hmm. like, she goes, Renee, you don't do this because you want to have a job. You do this for moments like that. Because before the show, me and mm -hmm. Steve, we're listening to lovely music and we were just singing away. We had such a lovely time. She goes, a good what time. did you do this for? And I go, you know, I never thought about doing that. That would be part of it. And then it just was. And then when we did the show at the Black Expo in Indiana with Truth, yeah. and I had to go to sound check and it was only me in there, you guys. They were singing to me. I was like, this is the <laughs> sucking it the up, concert right? when you can just stand here and that I'm the only check. audience. <laughs> I was like, this is it. I said, yeah. this, this is my day. My day has been made. I don't need to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And that show was crazy because I, for whatever reason, remember, we couldn't get the track to the, the audio person. So I had to sit there with my computer. Talk about somebody who was nervous. I had to be more nervous than you on stage because all yeah. I knew was that my computer was going to go to sleep or something yeah, and yeah, all the great. sound was going to go away. I was shaking. I My sister was like, why are you in the audio booth? Because I sent a screenshot and she's Man. like, why are you back there? I go, because I'm in charge of the sound. I'm <laughs> handling was, the music tonight. She was like, that's on your job description. I go, I feel so unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> It worked out though. It worked it out. It did good. work out. The man's like, you'll be fine. And I'm like, you have way more confidence than I right. do. <laughs> <laughs> like, but um, I was because my sister actually does DJ. And I was like, I'm not a DJ. So why is my computer up here? But okay. Mm. But um, but that was crazy. But yes, when I was standing there with singing, I was like, oh my God. Now I know I never told you this because I've only told a few people this. So I think there's some lyrics and all I do is think of you that I thought it was one thing. And then when you sing it, I go, oh, my God, let she's singing the wrong words. <laughs> she goes. I, I could do that. I do that sometimes. I change it when I feel like it, I guess, sometimes. Oh, what line are you talking about? I can't remember ever. Um, You're fine in every way or my no, heart is No, something about straight. summertime, is it? Is it summertime? At the nope. end of the summer. Nothing about summer in there. See, there it is. That's that. <laughs> and somebody posted Nothing something about on Instagram about in her there. something, and they were like, "Can you imagine finding out?" And I go, "No. Can you imagine that you want to tell your client you're singing the wrong words?" <laughs> I'm finding out lyrics to new to songs I've been singing since the '80s. I'm finding I was singing wrong lyrics. Right. Well, you and me both. You and me both. But this one, I was like, I stood there and I was like, "He not saying the right words." That is so funny. No, we don't say anything about summertime in that song. Oh, 
It's Nothing. all I, I know. It's all I do is think of you. Um, God, what is the word? I have to figure it out. But yeah, I don't know I, that song. <laughs> I have to figure it out. But it was all I do is think of you. The another funny thing was when you were playing. What is that song? Was it Come Back Home? No, it wasn't. It was another song on Deepa, I think. And I was like, there's a song you just played. Who was that? And you were like, Troop. And I go, no, 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 not that song. It was another song. You're like, Renee, that was Troop. <laughs> I go, that's not who sang that. And you were like, Renee. I was like, that's true. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, that's not who I thought sang that. <laughs> that's funny. Not at all. Um. What and so I'm trying to make sure I read these comments and questions, but um, okay. but yeah, um, so after troop, um, troop, well, you guys, did you see the unsung? If you didn't see that unsung, that was a good unsung, I must say. I it came so. out on my birthday that year, August okay. 20. But uh, but yeah, that unsung has been played a million times, but please watch it. You can find it on YouTube. It was great. So Troop had a lot of issues that they ended up having with the record label and the what I, it was a whole lot, a whole lot. And so Steve comes out with a solo album, which is around the time that I had um, started tweeting him because so random. <clears throat> so random, you guys, is really good. The wedding singer is back. But so random is good. But so random, he sold it. And I remember I saw him on something online and he said, you can get his CD. And if you want to autograph, you can do this. And so once again, something happened. I didn't get the information. So I sent a message to him and was like, what'd you say to do to get it autographed? And so I bought it. And when I tell you, it took him forever to send that CD. <laughs> <laughs> And when that CD arrived and it was it had a lovely message, it was autographed, I cried. I was so excited. <laughs> this was before I met him, you guys. Because as Steve will tell you, I was like, Steve, I used to scream and shout about you too. And he said, yeah, but now I'm just, and we don't curse on this show, but he said, now I'm just effing Steve. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, I was like, he, and he knows I have, my ringtone is, when he calls, my ringtone is, all I do is think of you, and when he texts, it's spread my wings. <laughs> and so I would hear that, funny. and I'm like, I go, Lord, what does he want now? What did I What forget? does he want now? What did I forget? <laughs> and then, you know, every time Steve had an interview, I had to remind him. So I'm like, Steve, okay, you need to be ready in 15 minutes. You need to be ready. Okay. So I had a really bad day, you guys. I was competing to be one of, um, to be Katie Kirk's co-host. And I was made it to the top 10 and I didn't win. And I called and told him and I was so upset or so. And he had an interview that day. That's why I was talking to him. I was like, da, 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 da. The thing is at this time, he's like, okay, well, you know, do you use your remind me? I said, I will. And so he goes, I'm about to go to Ralph's house. Now that would be Ralph Tresman. Now next to Steve, that is the other lead singer that I always liked. So, and Steve knew. Everybody too, loves so. Ralph. He says, whatever. And so just like everybody loves Steve. So be quiet. So um, so I was like, I said, okay, well, whatever. I just need you to be on this interview at such and such time. So I call him back at the time. It was like, okay, the interview's in such and such minutes. You know, I'm calling you. He's like, hold on. He put Ralph on the phone, you guys. <laughs> I tell you, I thought I died and went to heaven. I was like, oh my God. Now, mind you, this is the same person who's met Ralph on numerous occasions. And actually Ralph does know who I am, but I still, but I was so cool on the phone. He, if Ralph ever seen me fan out, he would probably be in a state of shock because I am so cool every time I'm really cool. But I'm telling you inside, I'm just like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. And so it was a lovely little conversation we had. It was wonderful. I was just like, oh my God. And I go, Steve, you made my day. I was having a really bad day. He was like, I know. I was like, thank you. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was like, he looks out. I appreciate him. But um, I'm just trying to help. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yeah, so um, so yeah, Steve is tight with Ralph, and that just is crazy to me. But um, but it's I think one day they should do a duet album because I think or make it a trio, Ralph, Alan, and Steve. Which, by the way, I did get Alan's album, and mm, 
you guys, Troop was lucky. They had a whole lot of lead singers. It wasn't just one. <laughs> and <laughs> when I tell you, <clears throat> anybody Troop comes out, you should probably get it. You should probably yeah, we, pick it up. We're still working on the legacy, you know. Yeah. Um, Alan exactly. has a, Alan has a really nice single out right now. That's what I'm. No, I got the whole thing, I'll so I, I yeah. listened to it. Yeah. Burning, mm -hmm. yes, that's the first one I listened to. Yes, it was very good. And so yeah. I must say, yeah, they're very talented. And you know what blew me away when we were backstage at the Black Expo that time and you guys were warming up? I was floored. I said, oh my God, they can all sing. Like, it's not like only three people sing, they right. all five really can carry a tune. Yeah. Was I was cool. just like, yes, I was like so impressed. I said, that is so awesome. So unfortunately, you guys recently lost Reggie. I talked about it here on the show. And that was so sad. But I'm glad you guys, I see, have two concert dates coming up so far this year. Right? Yeah, we got Vegas about, we got about and five. We got about five. five. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, lovely. So do you have the city or not? Uh, I know you have Vegas and Indiana because I saw those posted. We have Vegas, Indiana, Sacramento. Uh, Dallas. Um, I have I have like about four solo shows myself in September. Okay. Um, Milwaukee, Dallas. There's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. You know, things okay. things are opening back up, so we're getting calls yeah. like crazy right now. Nice. Which is great. That, yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. So yeah. I'm sure so Reggie actually... is around. Everybody talking about true, true, true. <laughs> right. Right, right. No, I, my last <clears throat> big, huge event actually was Troop came to Chicago for Valentine's Day 2020. And that was probably my last big outing before the world shut down. Before it, it shut down. Yeah, that was All Star Weekend. And um, of course, I went to the show and they did a great job. It was great. And we got to hang out a little after and me and Bam went to, um, we, we tried to go to an all-star party. It didn't work out. But um, that was the end of the, everything shut down after that, yep. a couple weeks later. But yeah, that was the last thing I did. And actually, that is the only show that I've been to since I've known you. Did you know that? Wow, no, I didn't. Yeah, crazy. That's the only one. Um, <clears throat> but um, but yeah, that was a good, it was a great show. They didn't sing my song, which Steve has told me that you will sing, but you haven't sang my song. Uh, which one? Sure. I will always love you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're adding that, we're adding that back to the show permanently now. Because a lot of now. people are asking about that song. Well, I saw that you guys sang it on the Tom Joyner cruise, and I was devastated that I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, they sang my song. But yeah, you know what I did, you guys? Sure. I had him sing it in the studio and I recorded him. <laughs> <laughs> and he had no idea. Oh, that's perjury. <laughs> Bl blasphemy. <laughs> he was like, if I had known you were recording, I said, you did a fine job. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, somebody said that your version of Sweet November is her favorite. Oh, well, thank you. That's a big compliment. I thought the Dills is the best on the planet. Thank you. That's awesome. I, um, and then, oh, and when Steve came to Detroit, we were in the hotel. We're walking out of the hotel, and who walks in? Barry Gordy. Now, for those that don't know, all I do is think of you is the Jackson 5 song. <coughs> <laughs> so I'm like, Steve, there's Barry Gordy. I don't know. He went deaf all of a sudden. What? Steve, Barry, <laughs> Barry Gordy. What? Now we're like almost in front of the man's face. And I'm like, Steve, it's Barry Gordy. <gasps> oh, hi, Mr. Gordy. I was like, I was like, I've been trying to tell you since we walked off the elevator and the man walked in the building. <laughs> he was cool too. He was so cool. He was so cool. And I told my mom, I said that day I truly was a publicist because I think Barry Gordy is fine. Don't say nothing to me about how old that man is. I think he's fine. No, he looks and great. He looks amazing. And I was so bummed. I don't have a picture with Barry Gordy, but Steve does. Because <laughs> I did my job. <laughs> that I post very, so very often. I'm sure you do. 
I'm sure you do. So how did, um, how did all I do is think of you? I know the story, but how did it come to be that you guys did that remake? Um, well, I thought that it, I thought it was a great song. I thought it'd be a great idea because it wasn't a big hit and it was such a great song. So I just, I couldn't believe that it just wasn't one of their big greatest records. So anyway, when we got our record deal, um, I got with Chucky Booker and, and we remade it and the label passed on it for the first album, they passed on it. And when we started working on the second album, we did it again and submitted it again. And this time uh, Sylvia accepted it. And that's how, we, that's how it ended up on the record. We submitted it for both albums actually. And then okay. made it on the second album. And that, that, that's, just, that's just how it came about. And what about Sweet November? Uh, Sweet November, uh, I was working, I was producing the Deepa album and I was just looking for uh, another great record that, that was a, a great record that we could still make our own. And uh, me and Rodney, uh, Sweet November and um, I'll Send You Roses is just two of our favorite deal songs. And it was between those two songs and um, I think both Rodney and myself, we both just agreed that Sweet November should be the record. And that's how we end up getting a number one record with that. Nice. Yeah. So you have to tell everyone, Teddy told everyone how he met um, his first time meeting Michael. You have to tell us your first time meeting Michael. Um, I was in New York at Sony um, working on a group called B2K. And um, I was visiting uh, Dave McPherson, a friend of mine who was the executive at Sony at the time, and his his boss, Polly Anthony, uh, walked in the office while I was sitting there with Michael Jackson and John McClain, just walked in. Like, here, Dave, I brought somebody in to see you. <laughs> Michael is in the building, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, whoa. You know, this, you know, and um, Dave McPherson gets up to shake Mike's hand. And as soon as, as soon as Dave, I mean, as soon as he touched Mike's hand, he's like, Mike, you gotta meet Steve. You gotta meet Steve. <laughs> so I stood up and I shook his hand and I wouldn't let his hand go. And I was just shaking his hand and he was apologizing about something, you know, his allergies or something. And I was just like, no, you cool, Mike, you cool, Mike. And I just couldn't believe I was looking at him in his face and he was <laughs> shaking his head. And then um, right at that time, his I, I had just sang like three demos for Babyface for Michael's album, Invincible album, I think it was. I think it was that. And uh, anyway, his Mike's manager came in and was like, Steve, what you doing here? And I was like, oh, I'm just working on something. He's like, Michael, this is the guy that's singing those demos right here. And then Michael started looking at me, like blinking at me, like, who is this fool right here? <laughs> But that was my wonderful experience meeting my idol, Michael Jackson. It was random, unexpected, and it was awesome. He was so humble and so nice. I couldn't believe how short he was. He wasn't a big, tall guy, so I, that shocked me that he. I was looking at him in his face. He's a little guy, you know. But anyway, it was just that was my uh, one of the best moments of my life because Michael Jackson was the reason for me doing so many things and accomplishing so many things. He was he was the architect behind it for me. So that was awesome. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. Only imagine. Same with but, Charlie Wilson. I felt the same way about Charlie Wilson. Charlie Wilson was his face was on my wall and my whole entire time growing up. So to end up writing songs with Charlie and giving ad libs and 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 listening to him tell us his story, just sitting just that kind of it's just un I've lived for that, you know. <laughs> right. So right. yeah, anyway. So recently you have uprooted yourself and left Cali. Like who would have ever thought the Pasadena boy would ever leave Pasadena? <laughs> so, so what brought you to Texas? Uh just a better quality of life for me and my family. Um you know, we've uh, stuck together through some pretty tough times and it was just time for us to level up and um, just 
change of scenery, change of environment, change of air, change of just California. I, I did my time there. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I did my time in California. California treated me well. Um, and I just wanted to, my mom is from Texas. So, um, she, she had been trying to get me here before she transitioned. She had been trying to get me here for a while. So, you know, um, it was just time, you know, it, it, it was the perfect time for me at this, the second go round that I'm partaking in right now for a new energy, a fresh start. It was perfect for that. And, um, I, we absolutely love it. My family is very comfortable and we absolutely love it here. It's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I've seen pictures of the studio. It looks amazing. Oh, not yet. You just wait. <laughs> I stopped working on it to do the interview. You just wait till it's finished. <laughs> and the bird house, whatever you call that bird house, whatever the that. Loft, yeah. Good Lord. Oh, we're not playing. Oh, we're not playing. I we're can tell. Winning. We we went in the World Cup and winning Grammys and everything. We're doing it on both ends now. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's Father's Day weekend, and we have to speak about Steve's amazing children. Now, first, I don't know little Steve that well, but I know of Sia Moon, and I annoy her probably every time I text her. But she is, and I even said to Steve, "Where did she come from? Because she's just so smart and so amazing to <laughs> be your child." <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't be. She Couldn't is too be. smart to be my kid. She is so, oh my God, the girl <laughs> is amazing. Yeah, she's awesome. She is she's awesome. so awesome. She's like my sister daughter. You know, she was raised by my mom as well as, you know, me, myself. So she, uh, she's, uh, she's super talented, super songwriter. Uh, you guys, Very she smart. has her own albums of people that she's written for. Yeah, Trey she's, songs, she's, Lady yeah Gaga. she has um, Lady she, Gaga, Trey songs. Mary, uh, right? Mary Tyrese, J. Tyrese, Mary J. Yeah. She's been doing her thing, you know. She, um, and then you guys, she sings. And she's an artist. Oh. Sia Amun, S-I-A-A-M-U-N. Yes. She's she awesome. I'm, yeah. is amazing. I'm and excited I mean, for producing her new album. Oh, okay. Finally, Andy. I get to work with her. <laughs> so. um, and you know, um, Rodney Jackson, which his real name, I can never remember anymore because he has had Rodney Jackson on his Facebook for so long. Why is his name escaping me? The producer. I know Keith. He's a- Keith. Thank yeah. you. Keith. Okay. <laughs> so what you don't know is that Keith produced a lot of Lady T's hits. Lady T was my first client when I started doing entertainment PR. Wow. And that was, I managed her too. So that was my very first client was Lady T. And Keith was, the he was on the radio here in Detroit. Wow. And Keith was the one that he put her on the radio. And then he started producing some of her songs of the Beat Renegades. And so when she, when, when Zia started... Uh-huh. I'm working with Beat Renegade. I'm working with okay, them right so now. Okay, so when she started posting, I go, and Keith was posting, and I'm like, wait a minute. So then I ended up telling Keith, I go, that is crazy. I just that, talked to Rodney a few minutes ago. That is so funny. So yes, I was like, oh my God, how crazy the world just is yeah, so small. It's so like, small. That is so insane. But he is bad. And you know what? Yeah. There, my sister knows, I don't pay attention on Inst- Instagram. <laughs> And so if you want me to see something, you got to send it to me. So she'll send me something. She also knows I never have volume on. So she sends me this little video and says, turn volume on. I'm like, okay. So I turn the volume on. It is a commer- a video. It's like a little commercial ad for the sports bras that I wear. Oh. But the music is so clearly Lady T. I'm like, Alicia, that's Lady T. She goes, that's why I sent it to you. So then I text Lady T and was like, you don't know. I love these sports bras. I wear them every day. She said, oh, Keith hooked me up with that licensing deal. Okay. So they still making it happen. Oh, uh, yeah. She's been licensing stuff up to, to this day and a whole bunch of stuff. And Lady T wow. is now 30 something. When I met her, she was 15. That's when we worked with her. Like 15 wow. to mm, maybe almost 20. 
So crazy small world. Small world. Yeah. But talented people should all connect because Keith is amazing. You're mm -hmm. amazing. Your daughter is amazing. Now, little Steve, I know I saw him in your um your movie that can people see it on YouTube still? Uh well no, it's it's it hasn't been released yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, it hasn't but, been released yet. Yeah, so um, but he 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 does he has musical talents as well. Yeah, he's an awesome songwriter. He's an artist. He sings. He raps. Uh, he's a he's a good entertainer, man. He's he's talented. He's just um, he's paving the way for his day right now. You know, I'm staying out the way. You know, letting him have it do his thing. You know, uh, but hopefully one day I get to work with him as well. Awesome song. But yeah, I've been pretty lucky as a dad. I got some pretty good kids. I can't. I was gonna say it's Father's Day weekend. So what does being a dad mean to you? Uh, it means, um, giving the best that I can to my kids, um, you know, passing on, passing on things that are going to make them better people, uh, making sure that I create some sort of, um, generational wealth for them that wasn't made for me, um, and just making sure that um, I contribute to society some uh, well-rounded, self-knowledgeable Black people, you know, um, mm -hmm. people who are sound and self in life and what it's about. That's what it means to me, just um, rearing up something great. Amen, amen. Um, and oh, also, Sia Moon was on Love and Hip Hop um, Hollywood. Yes, so yes. You guys could see her there. Too. Before everything shut down, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. But um, so, so does anyone else do the pigeons beside you, as far as your children? Um, well, my youngest, he he loves them as well. But he's probably all of my kids love them because they grew up around right. them. But uh, none of them yet are just have the fever like I had. Like when I was my youngest age, eight years old, I, I would live in the pigeon cage, you know? But, you know, it, was, it wasn't that many distractions right. when I was a kid. It was, you know, so, you know, but they all, they all, they all pretty cool with it. They all, I love it so much too. My wife, everybody is, is intrigued by How it. How many pigeons know? do you have? Uh, I have about uh, 150 pigeons, maybe. How did you get them from California to Texas? I drove them here in a nice big uh, roomy little trailer loft. We made the trip and everybody made it successful. And now, and now we are home, <laughs> Texas grown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, man, we made it. I was just like, what? No what joke, you? man. No, it, it really is. When he's serious about these pigeons, you guys, you thought he was serious about music, <laughs> dear God. <laughs> so, um, Bam has a great question. Have you thought about doing a reality show to find a new male group? Uh, yeah, um, I actually, uh, me and Ralph Tresvan, we are in Big Bub. We we l was pitching that a few years back, but TV is so from um, female. Uh, how do you Remember say? Me? Yeah, people like watching females on TV, women on television. So mm -hmm. it, um, we're going to try to push for it again um, sometime next year. We were talking about doing it. Um, but yeah, we need we need male groups so bad. That's definitely on the agenda. I'm, and we need female groups at this point, too. But, you know. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Um, My sister said. You should just bring you... SWV back. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. That Escape SWV versus was very good, though, I must say. Oh, yeah. I love them both. Yeah. Um, my sister said, now that you're in Texas, are you inspired by any country music? You don't know. Steve writes country music. Yeah. I, I've, um, I've always. Songs. Yeah. I've always been inspired by country music. Um, I, I don't I don't listen to country music in the sense of just being in Texas, I, I, they have some right. of the best R&B stations here. So I'm just happy for the R&B stations I'm listening right. to now and not forced to listen to stuff I don't have to or don't want to listen to. 
but I've I've always been inspired by country music. I mean, I um, uh, my song "Come Back to Me, Shorty" on Tyrese that was inspired. You know, that was country inspired. Um, uh, Why you want to change me on Ruben was country inspired. I've always had that. So yeah, I'm I'm inspired. He, uh, I'm telling you guys, all genres. Like if you listen to So Random, he does have a lot of mixture of genres. It's not just R and B. Right. But I think the reason why I like the wedding singers because he knows I am an R and B person, and that is my <laughs> album. Yeah. And the wedding singer, he had been working on it, working on it, working on it. So finally, it was ready. And I went and bought a copy. Now, if you all know, I was working with the man, but I had to go buy a copy because it was that good. <laughs> that well, you got to support. Yes. and But I mean, you, you you know, a lot of people push, you know, stuff that they don't necessarily support. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But even Lady no, T also, I bought her CD too. I yeah. buy things that I really liked it. I was like, this is good. And I'm telling you, it's good. I know it's good. I went to sleep to the wedding singer last night, by the way. I'm going to uh, shoot some visuals to the wedding singer coming up. Oh, I'm getting wonderful. ready to shoot a couple videos for that. Okay. Because nobody knows it. Nobody really knows it's out. But yeah. it's a pretty pretty good body of work. I like it. It's I like it. very good. Thank very, you. very good. And it's one of those CDs you guys could just play straight. Yeah, a lot of decent songs things. on it. It just all flows. It's really, really good. Really? Um, and you can find that on all the digital platforms. So please go look for it. Stephen Russell said she had Hearts. forgotten about the Ruben song. Yes, Stephen Russell Hearts. Yeah. And I'll put the links in the box below. You guys on YouTube, I'll have the links in the box below. I just got to go find them. But I have the links to most of his music. I have the links for it and I'll put it in here. Um, yeah. My sister said she had forgot about the Ruben song. Yeah. Oh, okay. But um, Alicia also said we need real R&B back, which I totally agree, which is why I like Bad. listening to SWV and Troop and people who because I there's a certain way you can tell old R&B, especially the way it starts. It has music at the beginning and then people <laughs> sing instead of people singing out the gate. It's just it's just something about it. You like those you like those old school intros. Uh, yes. That's so funny. I do. Yeah, it's just the feeling, you know. Um, we need love music back. It's just, yes. this is plain and simple. We need love back in the music. You can have that, but we, it, it, we should be able to have both. It shouldn't just be no love music, right? You know? yeah. So That's I'm gonna do I'm my like, part. Please, please. My studio is almost finished. I will be doing my share. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. It's not too hot yeah. for you in Texas. Uh, the, the heat hits kind of different. It hits kind of <laughs> different, but too hot. No, uh, we're pretty, we're pretty, we're doing pretty good for ourselves out here. It's dry heat. So it won't get too hot, but it's hot. It hits, it hits different out here. It hits different. And the mosquitoes hit different too. Oh no. Oh no. Pretty aggressive. But I, but I mean, you know, hey. I'll take a couple bites. Is. Yeah, I'll exactly. take a couple bites. Exactly. So what, besides the fact that you are going to please bring us some new music and some videos, what else do we have to look forward, for, forward to? Well, I'm finishing my first movie. Uh, I have an eight-episode film called Day Ones. Uh, That's the one that's done in this guys. Ready to. Yes, starring my son, Put Your Heart It, and um, um, Karen, Cameron Walker. Um, I'm just finishing that. That's the biggest thing on my agenda right now, outside of executive producing my daughter's next album, Day Ones. You know, directing my first film is 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 huge for me right now. So I'm just we're just getting that finished so that we can start shopping where we're going to get that placed, and uh, see see what doors that open up. Tons, tons, tons. Yes. And um, and then I mean, you know, it's 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 really in to be black these days so netflix <laughs> uh, finally who shut up <laughs> hulu there's a lot of places that i think will be more than happy more than happy you know quest loves documentary i think it starts next week or the week after and his is on hulu and it's about um oh, okay. it's about some music festival i know nina simone performed that i can't remember who else but but yeah um so 
that will be really cool um, to have your stuff out yeah. there. And to have this troop um, five of a kind documentary would be lovely too. Yeah, that's 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 in the works. That's almost done as well. Yeah. So, um, my company Black Box, you'll be seeing a lot from from them. Okay. We got a lot of content coming, so I'm re really excited about that. Awesome stuff. And excited awesome. about writing new music. You know, I took a break since my mom transitioned. I I, I kind of took a long needed break from music, so I feel fresh and renewed now. So I'm, I'm just I'm just geared up, ready to go. Oh, maybe I'll get that theme song. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah, it's possible. Maybe. <laughs> you guys, we are in the seventh season of the Ask Dr. Renee show. I, asked I am you so late. Theme song how many years ago? I am so behind. I am so behind. I was like, please, just just a little song, just just a little some some. You know? <laughs> but um, but look, I have faith. Before yeah, I make it to TV. And even maybe, maybe after I signed right. the dotted line for TV, all of a sudden here comes my song, which is fine. Yeah. Taking everybody I hey, can't. You know, I had the song, you know, I had this sitting around, you know. <laughs> I thought this might work for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's funny. You are hilarious. But everyone, yeah. thank you so much for watching. Next week, we will close out the month with DJ Wiz from Kid and Play. It's my buddy. Um, yeah, it, Mark is bomb, okay. And so, um, and that is going to be a lovely conversation as well. But thank you, everyone. Please, fathers, enjoy your Father's Day weekend. Daughters and sons, enjoy your fathers. Um, enjoy your grandfathers. And please enjoy Juneteenth because today's Juneteenth. So um, happy Emancipation Day because we, we actually were free today. Yeah. <laughs> um, and poor Texas was the were one we? that didn't know. Remember, Texas did shut up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, He's my conspiracy theorist friend, too. I thought there's a, a, <laughs> a bunch of still enslaved. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. He is a mess. But you guys, please follow him everywhere. Um, That's what I'm about to put up here. Your Instagram is probably the easiest, right? Yeah, that's where I am the most. How many? Uh, Russell Hearts with two S's? Yes. Okay. So everyone, please follow him on Instagram. Um, and his contact info is in there. He does speaking engagements because when I tell you he, he is a prolific speaker and he speaks a lot about like what I speak about motivation, manifestation, inspiration, just making it all come to be. Oh, man. And, you know, just like he had a vision, yes, yes, yes. I had a vision and, you know, you, you have to start with a vision. I, I will promise you, I never saw my vision being the man's music who I used to go to sleep to the CD every night being in my speed dial. But I, I didn't see that. <laughs> just, just like me being with Gerald LaVert. Exactly. The biggest LaVert fan on the planet. Next thing I know, I'm like his little bro. He, he come me, man, come out here to clean the man. You know, it's like things, hey, things, things happen. happen. This life is what you make it, it for sure. It truly is. It truly is. Um, okay. I was making sure I finished all the questions. My sister sends me, you know, she's my executive producer, sends me notes. So, right. <laughs> but yeah, so you guys, please, he's he, wonderful speaker. And, you know, obviously he knows about the business on both sides of it. So make sure you contact him. And then if you have a function and you need some entertainment he is very 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 available as well yes, so yes, yes. please definitely follow him on instagram and um thank you so much for your time this afternoon sir. Uh, thank you for having me on the show studio. again uh, i hope the technical difficulties uh were better this yeah, time it was, than it was much better last just, time sometimes you froze a little but it's okay it wasn't like last time last time you were completely leaving oh, out okay. and coming back. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not to mention the fact but you forgot for about me, me last time. It. And we're like 20 minutes late. But, you know. You know, I forget about I know. Uh, listen, you know I know. Get in line. There's a long line. <laughs> <laughs> you know I know. So, um, and you know what I always said? I said, but he was never late, nor did he miss any interview that I ever scheduled, which was the most important to me is my name. So no. he didn't miss not one. Yes. You no, did. I represent. I and represent. did well. 
You guys, if you Google his name, you will see he's done lots of video interviews and stuff with Madame Noir and all these things. And I was nice enough and able enough to get my good friends to accompany him so that he went with cool people and had wonderful times at all of the events that I didn't make it to in California. So, yes. Yeah. 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 But I Always will. A blast. Um, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. So, because um, every time I meet somebody that he knows, I'm like, oh, that's what I can say. <laughs> And congratulations on the on the life change with the uh, you look great. Thank You've lost a lot of weight. Thank you. That's very inspiring. I need to lose weight, so that's, you've that's lost inspiring. Since I've known you, so you, you're doing fine. Yeah, uh, you know, they say as you get older, you kind of no, but you know what? But you bit. are smaller now than you were in troop, aren't you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And look how good he can move then, you guys. But. Um, yeah. But you know what I thought back to is when I met your daughter the first time, she was not the way she looks now. And so I would look at her and be like, well, if she can do it. I can do this. Yes. Yeah, she um she's she's she works hard at um maintaining who she wants to be exactly. for herself, you know. And for a lot of people, that's the biggest, like for me, that's just the biggest thing on the planet to to maintain, you know, and the e easiest thing to let slip away you know but you've done well I, that that's inspiring thank I you i appreciate that. it so i am going to uh see you guys next week and please make sure you hit the notification bell in case i come on and do another video or something or we have some special guest or something you'll know about it and of course you should subscribe to my you should um get on my list text live life to 66866 live life to 66866 and I will see you next week. Bye. Steve, don't go anywhere. I just said, Steve, don't go anywhere. You guys, he doesn't listen to me.